number one thing uh, has to do with what the water molecule does in the body. And um, ultimately, we need to stop thinking about the human body as a cellular entity. We certainly have, you know, a vast number of 50 trillion or 70 trillion human cells, depending on who you talk to. And that's a lot. That's a very large number. Obviously, none of us can really wrap our mind around a trillion. Um, but 50 trillion cells uh, is a drop in the bucket numerically to the number of molecules in our body and that's a drop in the bucket compared to the number of atoms in our body and so ultimately we have billions and billions of atoms that will make up any single molecule and or any single cell and then you multiply that out by the trillions and we're now up in these astrological you know size numbers in regard to the number of atoms in our body and those atoms are ultimately the fabric of who we are and, and that's not just us as human beings but that's what a table is that's what a flower is is any, any solid structure in our environment is this atomic structure that's got organized energy and organized matter within it. And the energy is ultimately the majority of that. Uh, some 99.999% of the atom is vacuum space full of energy. Amazing. And the electromagnetic field and only 0.001% of it is solid. <laughs> this matter. is just beautiful to listen to, you know, and, yes. <laughs> and so... Ultimately, we're not solid creatures. We're, we're a tiny bit of matter organized around an energetic force. And so we are energetic beings um, at our, our center. And then you have to ask, well, if we're 99.99% energy, how is that energy giving us the impression of a solid table sitting in front of us? Hmm. That solid table is a tiny bit of matter that's now being organized in such a way that it, that it creates an energetic space that feels solid. And so that, that organization, it turns out, in uh, the human body and any other biologic system is managed by the interaction of the water molecule with the energy field. <laughs> so in my book, the wow. water molecule is the translator between biophysics and microbiology. Yes. And, uh, it, is, it is literally the translation point. It's literally the adapter, if you will. Now, you can imagine you take your computer and you have to plug that into the wall to plug into an electrical grid to make the computer work. In the same way, I believe that biologic body has to plug in through the water molecule to access the energy that is, a, that is available. And when you are well hydrated, when you are really well plugged in, you literally have access to all of the energy in the universe, which is infinite, obviously. And that, again, is kind of a bold and strange statement, but the reality is electrons are free to exchange all the time, and they do indeed exchange all the time. Electrons will exchange from my protons into yours over a course of a few days across the course of the United States, you know, and so uh, our electrons are traveling, you know, worldwide over, over weeks and months uh, time, and we're exchanging with electrons that are coming in from deep reaches of outer space through the uh, electron flow that comes into our atmosphere in the form of the ion charge that creates the image of the aurora borealis that we're all familiar with, those northern lights. That's an electron flow into our stratosphere, which is then translated through 100,000 lightning strikes an hour uh, to the surface of the yes. Earth. Yes. And so then the Earth is being charged by that deep space electron uh, source, and then we're being you know, charged with that and absorbing those electrons every time we go outside or especially if we will touch the, the ground with bare feet or whatnot. And so we're tied into this infinite supply of electrical energy. Yes. Yes. The water Come on in. yes. Through the medium of water and hydration. Absolutely. So yeah. That would be that. So in some ways that's probably enough of a reason to stay hydrated right now. <laughs> it sure is a big reason. And, uh, number two yeah. would be, you know, so number one is you're plugged into biophysics. Uh, through the water molecule. Number two is genetically. And so number two, uh, your DNA strands that are also famous in the Watson and Crick double helix there, that DNA strand actually doesn't function, doesn't bend well, doesn't actually create that nice structured double helix well unless it's coated with water. And so that water molecule is really critical for genomic health and genomic function. And so number one, I would say, is an energetic connection. Number two is a genomic connection. And then number three would be a protein folding phenomenon. Uh, mm -hmm. Protein folding is one of the most mysterious and remarkable miracles that happens in every single cell every single day. Protein folding is a 
uh, not just tertiary structure, but actually what's called a quaternary structure of a string of amino acids that are, are being produced by an RNA strand, which is a template of the DNA. And so the DNA inside your nucleus has to create a copy, a mirror image, in the form of a, a messenger RNA that then travels into the cytoplasm of your cell, which of course is all water. And then the water molecule sitting on top of the RNA now pr provides the interface for the enzymes, the polymerases, uh, which are large en enzymes that run along the RNA to, to start tagging amino acids, matching amino acids to each nucleotide sequence of the RNA. Those amino acids now form a long protein chain that then has to do a three-dimensional and then a four-dimensional shift into this functional unit. And so this uh, quaternary structure, uh, which is a very cool energetic uh, phenomenon in three-dimensional space, has to happen for an enzyme to be functional. And some you know, 90-95% of the enzymes in our body are actually produced by bacteria and not even human cells. So whether we're talking about the microbiome or the human cells, these large proteins that are going to do the heavy lifting of everything from cell metabolism to uh, cell repair, cell regeneration, all of these are really desperately dependent on water being coherent enough to allow for very well uh, well-composed protein synthesis. If there's enough stress in the system, and remember stress is ultimately an energetic phenomenon, and so if you create enough stress or static within the energy field, the water molecules start to line up different, differently. And now you're carrying stress in the water molecules. And we measure this all the time in my clinic with an energy camera from Russia, and the GDB camera, which is a gas distribution velocity camera, it gets an image off of each fingertip there's a 10,000 volt current that pulses across the finger. A plasma discharge happens. That's filmed for half a second. And then the computer compiles that uh, seemingly chaotic sunburst of plasma coming off your fingertip into a coherent image of, uh, of uh, the fingertip and its relationship to all of your organ systems uh, through the reflexology map. And so now you have organ system demonstration of where there's chaos in the water field or not, and that's also when you're reflecting the energy field. So energetically and water structure, you start to get bend or chaos in that environment. Now you imagine that amino acid chain coming off an RNA, and it can now misfold. And misfolded proteins are now seen uh, to accumulate in almost all of our chronic conditions, Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. Parkinson's, type 1 diabetes in the pancreas, you know, all of these different organs, the liver, um, anybody with lymphoma or leukemia, will tend to have high propensity for amyloid or, or protein misfolding um, happening. And so all of this, you know, protein misfolding, I think, is a third part of poor water uh, function.